We're chuckling about it now, but there were some close shaves there, weren't there? There were a lot of close shaves. <laughs> I mean, literally everything that could have gone wrong did go wrong. Um, uh, but, you know, it was, it, was, it was good. It was worth it in the end, you know. It saw some amazing things. Um, and, yeah, it was an incredible experience. Did life in the paras really prepare you for getting on the wrong end of a, <laughs> of a crocodile or a hippo? I think life in the paras prepares you for most things. Um, hippos and crocodiles weren't on the, uh, on the training schedule, but um, I think it's more mentally than anything. You know, the, there was lots of challenges physically. It was a long way, lots of dangers and things. But um, I think the toughest thing was, was mentally just committing to nine months of walking and waking up every day and, and doing the same thing and, and getting into a routine. Why did you decide to do it? Was it simply because no one else had done it or, or rec had been recorded doing it? Well, it wasn't really about the, the record breaking or getting from A to B. Actually, for me, um, the real sort of draw was the fact that it is so diverse and it's such a, an interesting river. Um, and also it's a great opportunity to explore modern Africa, to inspire other people to uh, want to undertake their own expeditions as well. Because, you know, most of us from our school geography will know the Nile's pretty long, mm -hmm. although it has two That's right, starting yeah. points in Ethiopia. You started at the other one in Rwanda. Yes. That's a, such a long way from, well, yeah, it, it's, it's tributaries. 4,000 miles, uh, six countries. Uh, and I, I worked it out, I took about seven million steps, so quite a long way. So weren't you wearing one of those little things that records <laughs> I didn't steps? know that. You'd have broken the world record, <laughs> yeah, surely. <I> know. <laughs> surely. Um, what, was the, what was the, well, I know what the lowest point mm. was, and we'll talk about that first. The death of Matthew Power, an American journalist yeah. who joined you for part of the walk. I mean, you couldn't have foreseen that happening, of course. No, um, I mean, that was obviously an absolute tragedy. Um, it was something that was very unexpected, um, and it really demonstrates just how um, dangerous things like heat stroke can be. Um, and unfortunately, I was in a very, very remote part of um, Africa, and there was just nothing that, that more that could have been done. Obviously, um, you know, we, we did try our very best to, to save Matt, um, but unfortunately, he, he passed away. And then, of course, you were caught up, as we mentioned there, mm -hmm. in the civil war in South Sudan again. Yeah. You must have feared for, for your so own life there. Well, again, very unpredictable. You know, the, the civil war um, actually started about two weeks after I had already begun. So I knew for, for so, you know, months, really, that I was going to be walking towards this very unpredictable place. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, it was, it was full-blown sort of civil war at the time. You know, there was lots of fighting, um, and it made it a very, very dangerous place, not just for me, but for my guide. So I had to make the very difficult decision to, to skip over the, the front line, unfortunately. It seems almost comical, then, to talk about, uh, you know, uh, a hippo attacking you. But, I mean, again just as dangerous but in a completely different way exactly you know there's a lot of things out there that can, <laughs> that can ruin your day <laughs> yeah what was it like when you sort of looking down the well that, what, you know is this is this the one is this, this is not this is not the one that okay. was a, that was a friendly one um, <laughs> um i mean you know boston my guide he uh, he took great pleasure in telling me that uh, the most dangerous place in africa is between the hippo and the water and that's where i was for about six months of the journey so lots of hippos lots of crocodiles so yeah. what were the high points then the high points, I'd say, a couple of couple of things really stand out. Um, probably Murchison and Falls in Uganda is a spectacular place, and it really does have um, all of the amazing the scenery, the wildlife um, that that Africa has to offer. So anyone that gets the opportunity, I'd, I'd definitely say to go there. Um, but for really, it was about the people, um, especially in in Sudan. Oh, like the Mundari tribe. The Mundari tri tribe in South Sudan. Um, the Sudanese people, incredibly fr friendly. I think it says a lot about a country where you know I couldn't. I couldn't walk for more than you know a few meters without somebody trying to drag me into the house to offer me a cup of tea. So really friendly, very hospitable. They look very friendly there. And look, Levison, I know you've got another expedition in the offing. You can't tell us about it. It's still under wraps. But when you do, come and tell us about it. I'd love to. Something big um, on another continent that uh, maybe begins with an A. Okay. Narrows it down a little. We'd expect nothing else. Thank you very much indeed. Good to Thank see you. Thank you very much.